Good day. Our topic today is inventory control. I'm going to present three quantitative models, the economic order quantity, the lot size production model, and the quantity discount model. First, I'd like to say a little about the theory of inventory control. The idea is trying to figure out the optimal order quantity, Q, that will minimize the total cost. So on this axis, we've got the, the quantity to order. This axis, we've got the, uh, the dollar amount. Now, uh, as the order quantity increases, your inventory costs are going to increase. That's like pilferage, warehousing, um, the cost of the, the capital to pay for the stuff, and so on. But uh, your order costs decrease as your order quantity increases because you have to order fewer times. That's like processing the paperwork, processing the order, uh, the uh, employee cost, whatever goes into the order cost. So the total cost function then is minimized at the point where the two cost functions intersect. And that would be the optimal order quantity right there that we're going to find in the next uh, example with the EOQ. Now there's two systems. There's the Q system and the P system. The Q system assumes that the quantity that you order each time is fixed. Okay, the quantity you order each time is fixed. Okay, over time your inventory decreases and then you order the same amount each time. Under the P system, for the period system, there the period is fixed and the quantity is what is uh, changing. So, for example, with the P system, you might order every Friday and your quantity that you would order is going to change depending on how much demand you've had that week. So first let's talk about the Q system. Okay, the EOQ, economic order quantity. The formula is Q star is equal to the square root of 2 times C sub O times D divided by C sub C. Where C sub C is the carrying cost or holding cost per unit per year. C sub O is the order cost per order. D is the annual demand. Okay, then we've got the total cost function, which is 1 half times Q star times C sub C plus D over Q times C, C sub O. 1 half Q is the average inventory, and then when we multiply that by C sub C, we get the total holding cost. D over Q would be the number of orders placed, times C sub O, the cost of ordering, would, would give you the, the order cost. And like we saw on the previous page, the uh, optimal minimum total cost occurs where the holding cost is going to be equal to the ordering cost. So as an example of the, of the EOQ, let's assume that annual demand is 1000 the order cost is $10 per order, and the holding cost is $0.50 cents per unit per year. So we calculate the Q star by plugging into the formula, which gives us the optimal order quantity of 200 units. So under the Q system, we would always order 200 units every time we place an order. Uh, one of the assumptions of this model is that the demand is constant. Now, of course, that's a big assumption because you know demand is never constant. But luckily for us, with the EOQ model, the, when you look at the curve, it's fairly flat on the bottom. Okay? Uh, it's robust in the sense that as long as we get in the ballpark, as long as this 200 with, is within a certain range, uh, we're, we've got a pretty low total cost. So this is a good starting point. So the total cost is uh, plugging in the formula, one half times Q times 50, 50 cents per unit per year gives us a holding cost of $50. We have to order five times, 1,000 over 200 is five, times $50, or times $10 is 50. Notice that the holding cost and the order costs are equal, so the total cost is minimized at 100. The next model is the EOQ with non-instantaneous receipt. This is also known as the lot size production model. This is used if we're producing the stuff. Instead of the previous model, we assumed that we were ordering it from outside. Now we're producing it, so it's coming, uh, it's coming in the door and going out at the same time. And then we stop production, produce something else on that line, and then it just goes out. So we have this jagged type relationship instead of what we had before where it came in all at once. 
You only use this model if P is greater than D, where P is your annual production capacity. That has to be greater than your annual demand. Okay, here C sub O is now the setup cost instead of the order cost. That's how much it costs to change over your line from one product to the other. So the formula is a little different from the, the regular EOQ because we've got this part in here. Okay, total cost. Uh, now we have the maximum inventory is right here. And then we, we multiply that by one half, we get the average inventory. And then taken all together, that, that's the holding cost. Uh, and then this D over Q is the number of setups times the setup cost. So as an example, let's assume that our demand is 10,000, annual demand, our annual production capacity is 13,333 and a third. So you can see that we don't have to produce all the time. We only have to produce, what is that, about three-fourths of the time. Uh, let's say that the setup cost is $100 and the carrying cost, again, is 50 cents per unit per year. So plugging into the formula, we see that the optimal uh, quantity to produce each time we produce is 4,000. Okay, uh, coming down here, the total cost multiplying through, uh, again, notice that the carrying cost is equal to the setup cost at optimality. So the total cost that we're minimizing is, is 500. All right, the uh, third example is the quantity discount model. Here the total cost in, in, includes, again, the, uh, the uh, 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 carrying cost or holding cost, the order costs, but now we include the cost of the stuff itself, where P is price times our annual demand of D. So we include the cost of the stuff, whereas before we assumed that there were no quantity discounts, so it wasn't incorporated. There's a three-step procedure. We calculate the EOQ for each price. If it's infeasible, we adjust it up only. We never adjust down. And then uh, the third step is we calculate the cost. So it's just your basic uh, EOQ model again that we're going to be using, except now C sub C is I times P, where I is the percentage carrying cost. So as an example, let's say that our annual demand is 5,000, our order cost is 49, our carrying cost percent is 20% of the price. Okay, so we've got three different quantities with three different prices. If you order between 0 and 9.99, the price is $5. If you order at least a thousand up to 19.99, you get a 20 cent discount to 480. 2,000 up gives us a 25 cent discount, the biggest discount at 475. <clears throat> so in step one, we calculate the EOQ for each price. Again, in the denominator, it's 20 uh, percent times the um, the price for the carrying cost. So the EOQ at five dollars is 700. The EOQ at 480 is 714. The EOQ at 475 is 718. On to step two, the 700 is feasible. It's within that range. 714 is not feasible, so we adjust up to 1,000. 718 is not in this range, so we have to adjust that up to 2,000. In the next step, we calculate the total cost. Okay, uh, the 700 over 2 for the average inventory, 20% times uh, 55 is 1, and then we've got our uh, order costs, and then the cost of the stuff itself, 5,000 units of $5, gives us a total cost 25,700 for the first, if we order 700. If we order uh, 1,000 at 480, notice we're no longer at the EOQ, so the holding cost is now higher than the order cost. The cost of the stuff is reduced to 24000 giving us 24725 If we do the same thing at $4.75, we get $24,822.5. That's ordering 2,000 units. So the optimal is to pay 480 order 1000 at 24725